And Creole parametric point patterns are probably the second most common kind of pattern that I create behind direction patterns. And I'm going to show you a couple of the ways in which I typically use them. I have a plate part open on my screen and I'm going to start off by creating a sketch of points that I'm going to use for patterning. Let's click on the sketch button and I'm going to sketch on this surface in the part and for orientation it's suggesting the right datum plane to face the right side of the screen and that works for me. I'll click the sketch button and now that I'm in Sketcher, let's go to our sketch view and it'll make it easier for me to work in no hidden line mode. And I'm going to start off by sketching a bunch of points and be aware there are two different sets of point icons in the ribbon. There's this one over here in the sketching group and this one over here in the datum group. Let's say that I use the point command in the sketching group and I'm just going to drop a bunch of points in here I'm not, and I'm not going to bother dimensioning it just to show you that when I try to get out of sketch mode now I'm going to get an error that tells me that the section is incomplete for reasons listed in the message area and it's saying that this section must contain geometric entities. These points in the sketching group do not create geometry so it's not allowing me to do that. Let me hit the undo button a few times to get rid of those. This time I'm going to use the point command in the datum group. And I'm going to create a point over here. And I'm going to let it snap to being in line over here. And then let it snap to being in line over here. And this other one I'm going to snap to both of those two other points. And for dimensioning this, let's throw in some center lines. And that way I can use the symmetry constraint to force the points to be symmetric about the center lines. Let's do that for the vertical points as well. And for dimensioning, I want to control the distance of the point from the side edges. So if the plate ever changes size, then the point locations will update appropriately. Let's click on the dimension icon and I'm going to dimension from here to this surface and then middle mouse button. I'm going to change this to a value of 0.5. And let's do that again, the point to the top surface and change that to a value of 0.5 as well. And let's grab the dimension, maybe move it over here just so that it looks a little better. There we go. I'm happy with my dimensioning scheme. And this time when I hit the check mark, I'm allowed to exit sketch mode. Let me turn on my datum point display and we can go back to a shaded mode. And when I rotate the model, you can see that I do indeed have points here in the model. Let's use these points for creating holes and then pattern the holes. I'll click on the hole command and you can pick any one of the holes in here. You don't have to pick the first hole that you created. Let's change from a simple hole to a standard hole. And I know that I want to use a number 10 size. And for the depth of this, let's just right click on here and choose to next. I'm happy with the whole definition, so I'm going to hit the middle mouse button, which is the same as the check mark. And with the hole still selected, I can hold down the right mouse button and then choose to pattern it. And when I go to pattern it, I'll go to the drop down list and change from the default type dimension to point, and then select the sketch that I just created. You have preview dots you could use to deselect any of these different holes if you don't want them generated, but I want all of them in here, so I will hit the check mark. So that is great for my first pattern. Now let's do another sketch point or point, or excuse me, sketch of points. And this time I'm going to use something different, and there's a method to my madness. All right, let's click on the sketch button and let's click use previous to use the same sketch plane and orientation reference. Just like before, I'm going to go to my sketch view and to make it easier to see, let's go to no hidden line mode. And this time, instead of dropping points, I'm going to drop in coordinate systems. And a lot of people aren't aware of this. 
a point pattern can reference either a sketch of points or a sketch of coordinate systems. Let's click on coordinate system. I'm going to drop one over here and then up over here. And same thing as before. Let's do one down over here and then down over here. And then just drop in a few other different ones in here. And I have a whole bunch of different dimensions on the screen. Let me change a few of the ones that I'm interested in. I want this to be a value of 2 and this one to be 2.5. Let's change some of these other different ones. And let's change this to a value of, I'm going to make this deliberately a little bigger than necessary. And this one, 2.5. And you'll also notice that we have a bunch of angle dimensions for the orientation of the coordinate systems. And I'm happy with the way that they are here. A lot of times with these 90 degree dimensions, I won't bother changing them from weak dimensions. But a shortcut that you can do is to swipe a box over all those different dimensions and then use the keyboard shortcut of Control T and that will change all those different weak dimensions to strong dimensions. And I'm happy with this. Again, it's a bit of a, a little bit cluttered sketch. If you want to, you could do some cleanup by moving some of these different ones around over on here. But I'm just going to hit the check mark. And let's go back to a shading with edges mode. And I'm going to make sure that my coordinate system display is turned on. I can turn off my point display. So here's my part with these different coordinate systems located in here. And I'm going to be good to myself and I'm going to call this my sketch CSIS, my sketch of coordinate systems, just so that will be easier for me to reference it later on. For my next feature, I'm going to use these coordinate systems for locating a sketch in my model. Let's create sketch and I'm going to click use previous just like before. And this time, instead of sketching entities, I already have a panel cut out for a connector saved out to disk. Let's go to File System, and here is a panel cut out sketch. I'm going to double click on it and then just drop it on the screen. For the scale, let's change that to a value of 1. And I'm going to grab the drag handle and just let it snap to that coordinate system. So that looks good. Hit the check mark out of here and hit the check mark out of here. And I can notice that, hey, wait, my part isn't wide enough for this cutout that's going to go on here. So let's go to the sketch. And from the mini toolbar, we can choose edit dimensions. And I can say, hey, you know what? This eight dimension, let's make this more a value of 10. And you'll notice when everything updates, the holes moved out with the size of the plate. Again, that's my design intent, and I accounted for that earlier. So with this new sketch, let's call this the cutout sketch. From the mini toolbar, I'm going to choose to extrude. Let's flip the direction. Because of a config option I have turned on, it's automatically toggled to remove material. And I'm going to right click over the depth drag handle and change this to to next to go right through the very next surface. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And with the extrude selected, I can right click and choose to pattern like before. Instead of doing a dimension pattern, I'll do a point pattern. And I'm going to select my sketch CSIS feature. And there you see the preview dots of where all the cutouts are going to be created. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And now I have my plate created. Let's create a panel for my connectors. I'll go to the new button and choose assembly. And this is going to be my connector panel and click the OK button. And I'm going to start off by assembling my plate component. Let me go to In Session to grab it. And I'll just use the right mouse button to access the default constraint to locate it at the origin. And then I can hit the green check mark in the dashboard or middle mouse button 
does the same thing. Let me turn off the display of this coordinate system. I no longer need it. And I'm going to expand the plate feature and show the sketch CSIS sketch. Uh, by default, after you use it in a pattern, it's automatically going to hide it. And if you expand the patterns, you can see that it includes a dependent copy of the sketch inside of the pattern. For the first component that I want to assemble, let's use a fastener. Let me go to In Session. I've already got it open. And here I have a McMaster car component. And I'll just drop it on the screen over here. For my constraints, let me use a cylindrical surface here and that cylindrical surface. And let's use this flat surface and this flat surface over here. I actually want a coincident constraint. I can double click on the 3D note. And in here first I can flip it and then change the constraint type from distance to coincident. That is good for that component. Let me hit the check mark and then I can click on the component and from the mini toolbar I will choose to pattern it and it recognizes that I assembled it to an instance of a part pattern so it lets me use a reference pattern for locating these in here. That's good. I can hit the check mark or the middle mouse button so I've populated my different fasteners in here. And the reason that I use coordinate systems in here is that I'm going to place a panel connector assembly that I downloaded from LCOM. Let me show it to you. Let me go to my window drop down menu. And here is a nice LCOM panel assembly. And I put a coordinate system in here and used this coordinate system for defining a component interface for placing it in other assemblies. Let's go back to my connector panel assembly. Let's hit the assemble button and I'll use in session to grab that particular assembly. And you'll notice that I have this dashed line extending from the model. Since I have a component interface, it's allowing me to pick a coordinate system to assemble it. And it's located properly in the model. I like that. Let's hit the check mark. And that's my first panel, assemb uh, panel assembly connector. Let's select the component. And from the mini toolbar, I can choose to pattern it. Like before, we'll change the type. And then choose point. And this is why I renamed this feature. I'll select it. And we have the preview dots showing where they'll be generated. I will hit the check mark. And let's turn off our coordinate system display. And in that way, I've populated these different LCOM panel connector assemblies into my model. So again, point patterns, very useful, whether you are putting points in them or actually coordinate systems. And think ahead in terms of how you might want to use them in an assembly to determine which one that you will select. Please let me know in the comments if these different techniques are useful to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. And for more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. Thank you very much.